Hello everyone, this is Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So, this, I've shown this picture before, but this is us. That's Earth. The little dot. We are a ball hurling through the cosmos. A rock in space. The illumination is essentially the sun reflecting off the Earth, but that is us. As we sit right now, watching this video, reading this book, walking, playing Xbox, having sex with your wife, ultimately, we are a ball hurling through space. It is comically ridiculous to believe that if we as a civilization just kind of sprung up on our particular planet and you have almost a near infinite cosmos, that something else would necessarily spring up also. It is also comically ridiculous to believe that our level of science is the end all and be all. Science evolves just like everything else, meaning their capacity to get to our planet is, is, is you can't put it this way, you can't discount the capacity of being able to get to the planet. And with the recent releases by the New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post, Politico, showing that the government understood and was studying the phenomena associated with things in our atmosphere that didn't belong to us have been gone on for several years. And to be honest, even that admission was, was, was slightly ridiculous because the government had been studying stuff for 50 or 60 years. The point I'm trying to make here is that the people on that planet are in dire and difficult straits. These apes, they've been given a planet where they have the capacity to meet their needs. They have the technical acumen to use it, exploit those resources to meet their needs in a way that doesn't off the planet, but that is not what's taking place. They've arranged themselves into this weird cancerous mentality that allows some to advantage themselves with the resources on this planet, the common heritage resources on this planet at the expense of others. So the plutocrat the, that with $10 billion can step over the homeless guy in order to get into his limo to go to his third or fourth house. This is problematic these apes these apes that being said there are times where these apes are magnificent and they do things that go beyond their normal constraints there is no god above or hell below that is forcing your society to be in the way that your society is arranged you as human beings this is choice there is no such thing as government. There is no such thing as cash. Those things are mental gimmicks and mental tricks. They're agreements that we as human beings make in a particular structure. But the structure itself is purely just a conceptual structure of the mind, if that makes sense. Society is a structure of the mind. It's a mental structure of sorts. How we arrange ourselves, culture, all those things are just tricks of the mind. You can't put your hand on those things. I can't put my hand on government. I can't put my hand on the building that the government exists in, but ultimately those things are conceptual. If that makes sense, I hope I'm trying to make sense on this. If it's true that we can arrange ourselves in any way we want, providing we we're willing to deal with the consequence of that arrangement, which is which I will say is somewhat of a flat fact, then we don't have to be this way. This world could be a different place, but the world is not a different place. My, my point here is, there are moments where we go beyond ourselves, where, where the normal mundane things that we engage ourselves in, the ridiculousness, the pettiness that we engage ourselves in is transcended and we become something fucking magnificent. This is long missed. There's nothing in my lifetime that I can remember where there was a galvanizing influence where a bunch of people come together in this euphoric exaltation of human will and human determination and even human acumen and skill. Let's take a listen to this. This gives me goosebumps and it's one of my favorite speeches because it's, it's euphoric to say the least. Wait one second on that. All right, let's try to skip. Now look in this. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon, and to the planets beyond. 
And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom. But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. I fully believe that. That is beyond epic. We choose to go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is hard. <laughs> because it is hard. And have the, if I'm not mistaken, that Bostonian accent. I love it. We choose to go to the moon. And he makes this point. This will measure the best of us, meaning the best of our skill and, and abilities. We would measure and organize the best of our skills and abilities. It's this, this humanistic thing of, we're going to push ourselves to see what we can do. Now, don't don't get me mistaken. I understand that this wasn't done just for the sake of science. Meaning, the United States was in a Cold War. The United States was concerned that Russia was going to get into space. And that the United States wanted themselves to get into space. They were trying to one-up each other in this way. Um, I don't care. This this what NASA was able to do, what the Kennedy administration pushing them to do, making this bold, blunt statement in the face of reality and fate, saying we are going to go to the goddamn moon. That is epic as epic can be. We as human beings, these apes that were hitting each other over the head with bones and sticks, have gotten to the point where they're testing their skill and technical acumen in a way to leave the planet of their origin and go to another celestial body. We choose to go to the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. This will organize the best of our abilities. When he's saying the best of our abilities, he's talking about humanity as a whole. Understand what I'm saying. He's talking about the entirety of the human race. We're not going to go into space in a band of conquest. We're going into space with this idea of, of oneness. Um, and to be, I may be putting more into it. He may just be talking about America, but I don't think he's just talking about America. I think he's talking about the world. This will organize the best of our abilities. Our, again, meaning the world, or at the very least, the United States. It is an organizing thing. It is an organizing principle. It is something that is pushing the limits of science and technology, not in a way of war, meaning not building weapons of war, but building items of exploration and items of science and items... Of, of expansion we don't do that anymore we miss out on that that is something that i fundamentally have never been a part of where you have this president making this bold blunt statement not because he's going to murder anybody but purely because he's going for the scientific endeavor of this exploration and again i understand that the motivation for this wasn't purely based in science and purely based because john f kennedy was curious about space it was based from a standpoint of a militaristic application or, or militaristic thought of we need to get into space before the Soviet Union get into space and this is a pretext that we're going to use to do this bolstering NASA with this particular task I don't care I don't care that speech gives me goosebumps that speech gives me goosebumps the president of the United States making this bold blanket proclamation in the face of everything else knowing that they don't even have the technical acumen at the time that he's making this statement to even pull us off. When they finally were able to do this, the technology in your calculator is more advanced than some of the technology in the shuttle, meaning it was more advanced than the processing power of the computers in the shuttle itself. It was an amazing thing. It was a bold thing. It was an epic fucking thing that these guys got into essentially a tin can with, 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 with fire strapped on their back and propelled themselves into orbit. 
Humanity has also been exalted when they are putting satellites into orbit. The picture itself that you're seeing right here comes from a satellite that again, these apes placed or threw into the cosmos. An organizing principle, particularly when you're not talking about this thing of conquest and war, is an amazing fucking thing. And we may get bogged down into the minutia of things. Meaning, you know, this guy said this, Hillary Clinton had wrote a book, there's a book about Donald Trump, this guy that's a lefty punched into the lefty, whatever. We get bogged down into the minutia of politics and the minutia of life. We have these petty dramas that we associate with in our lives, completely ignoring the wider reality that we're a ball hurling through the cosmos. Once our needs are met, we can do anything we want. But we spend our days, we spend our times toiling away, making other people monstrously rich while impoverishing ourselves. We're a ball rolling through space. No God above, no hell below. We can do whatever we want. Is this really the way that we want to live our lives? And is this what we want to call freedom? And even under this particular model to which we live, certainly as a collective, can't we come together and do big things in the same way that they used to do big things? Don't let the minutiae drag you fully into the mud on this. Yes, you're going to fight in the sewers, but also keep your mind on this high ideals of this is a wider context. We are ball hurling through space. We are not stuck in any particular paradigm, even though the rest of society is, believes that it's stuck in a particular paradigm. Be above it all. That's my point. Yes, you go into the sewers, but at the same token, be above it all. We are ball hurling through space. Always remember the larger context. And I... I push for whoever's running or whoever's organizing to think big things, to think and shoot for big things. John F. Kennedy, we did not have the capacity to go to the moon when John F. Kennedy made that speech. It didn't stop John F. Kennedy from making that speech. Nor did it stop the enthusiasm from people behind him at that point after he made that speech. You set these people a target, you set these people a goal, and these people try to, sell, try to actualize that goal. But you got to be bold enough and brave enough to actually set that goal as the first place. And this expansive humanism of saying we're going to put a goddamn man on the moon and we're going to put a goddamn man on Mars is an amazing fucking thing. For all of the problems that we have on this planet, all of the poverty, all of the corruption, all of the horrible things that we do to one another, the bright spots, the beautiful spots, the epic spots are moments like this where we transcended ourselves and actually became this kind of one solid planet. Yes, under the certain banner of, of, of the rebuffing what we consider to be an enemy. But nevertheless, still, when he made that speech, that speech sounded like a rally and cry for all of humanity, not just for the United States. And I will accept it as such. Even if he's just talking about the United States, that's still over 300 million people. It is a beautiful thing to organize people around a beautiful cause. And that is one of the bright spots of our civilization. And regardless of the muck and the mire that we find ourselves in, we need to have the capacity to understand that we're, there's a larger context to the way that we're functioning and the way that we're living. And that for the most part, we're running in this kind of programmed thing, meaning the way our society is arranged. It doesn't have to be that way. That programming can change. It changes when we change and we decide it changes. But people, in order to even get to that point, need to understand they're a ball hurling through space and that ultimately we can make the choice to live any way we want to live. Living in a way that doesn't necessarily acknowledge the larger aspects of reality, meaning we're not focused on this idea of putting people on other planets or everything else. We're not focused on making sure our resources are intact, meaning each and every person have the things that we need in order to even have those larger conversations, in order to have those larger contexts. We're still stuck in the mire with the petty dramas dealing with class antagonisms. I would hope at some point we get past this. I would hope at some point we don't off ourselves in our behaviors. And I would hope at some point the larger context of the cosmos becomes something that's up for discussion and up for something that's we as a collective and a society, hell, as a world, decide that we want to do. Meaning, meaning joining in a certain level of exploration, a certain level of expanding ourselves beyond the planet. Just emancipatory humanism. I love it. I love it. I think these are, this is, these are moments that are representative of us at our best. 
And us, I mean humanity at our best. Of all our foibles and problems, this is us at our best. Collective action, together in a unified cause that sets a target and sets this expansive goal in mind with the society organized in a way to try to accomplish that particular goal. It is a beautiful fucking thing. Be above it. At least try to. So, I will leave it at that. There's a scene from, um, it was a horrible, horrible movie, but there's a scene in that movie where all of the humanity, all of the, the, everybody on the planet, let me see if I can find that. Um, it's, it's the best part of the movie. Like you have all of these people from all of these different countries coming on to this particular space station. And as they come on the space station, each one will shake hands with the next. Meeting all of these people who at some point were at odds with one another and everything else. Everything was settled. Earth was won. The wars were over. Human beings became rational. And then human beings become rational and the world coming together. the introduction of outside life came into the picture. I really want to find that because it was a beautiful, um, a beautifully done part in the movie. I can't think of the name of the movie. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Give me one second. Oh, where is it? 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 Yeah, this was a horrible, horrible movie. So, Okay, I can't find it. I'll try to put it at the bottom when I find it. Um, so I am going to leave it at that. I don't like giving up on this on stuff like this. All right. I, I'm going to leave it. I don't see it. But it was a beautiful scene. I mean, you had all these races and everything else coming and shaking hands with the person. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at this. Alright guys, if you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support through Patreon. Thanks guys.